Here we are, kids, episode 3, the height of gaming excitement, the high watermark of Duke Nukem 3D, which says something. This is where everything was just the best. You're back in LA, ready to take down some alien bastards and save some babes. Come get some. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. I am all out of gum. Cool. You might think it's an awful idea to start off with a chain gunner, followed by a sentry drone, and it is. The rest of the episode didn't like this. I'd say there are less drones in this one, mostly, than in episode two. Because there's hundreds, hundreds of aliens. And isn't a sushi place more of a Shadow Warrior location? Ah, never mind. Grab your Devastator and get killing. Those babes aren't gonna save themselves. I guess you'll save the Earth, too. Looks like it's mostly LA having trouble, at least until episode five which is only 20 years away. No new enemies except sharks for some reason. No new weapons, it's just you and a staggering number of invaders. Soon enough, you'll have your Devastator, your rocket launcher, your shrinker. It'll be great. Just gotta clear out the dining room. Okay, I've noticed a trend especially in this episode where the game makes it nearly impossible to save the babes. Maybe they shouldn't get all cocooned around explosives, I mean, it's not my fault. Blame... Richard Level Lord Grey. I'm sick of it, and we're gonna be real pros this time. We're gonna save the babes. Katie, we're gonna need some black boxes if we're gonna do this. Just cover anything that might turn somebody on. I still don't use the freeze thrower much. It's not as practical as the good old shotgun or the RPG or the Devastator, which is more useful than ever due to the endless octobrains. I run out in flood zone, it's not pretty. Pig cops return in force right behind this door. If this was blood, I'd already be dead. Thankfully in Duke, the pig cops have a reaction time above a fraction of a second unless they're crouched. Cool. Ooh. They're all hanging out in this strip club. Wait, this isn't a strip club. This isn't a strip club at all. It's a karaoke bar. Who wants to hear the Duke sing? Huh? It's great. Born to be wild. Born to be wild. He has other talents. Born to be wild. Holy shit, that's actually worse. Avoid killing the babes even though they're underwater and they probably drowned by now. They're not talking, I can't tell. Save them anyway, maybe it's like an alien. Paralyzes them, puts them in a coma. And keeps them alive, now what the hell is that? Yeah, like that dude said, science. Oh, and this thing here, this is a fun build engine thing where if you jump, but then crouch, you become so short that you can get under places you couldn't normally. Always check behind the wine racks, always. Some of this video is just gonna be cool shit happening, like this. That's how it goes in the Pro Series, you know what I'm saying? Now to exit the level with a big explosion I don't even cause. Bankroll, good map, lots of fun. This game, and build engine games in general, are at their best when you're playing through a normal everyday location as rendered using this janky engine and made by level designers, real level designers, not a team of people working on set dressing, and another team working on layout, and another one working on the lighting. That personal touch, one designer provoking the player in very specific ways. Oh, fuck you for putting that in a trash can. Get out of here. Then there's stuff like the music, specifically this track, Going After the Fat Commander. When I hear it, it evokes this 80s John Carpenter-esque urban warfare vibe. It's perfect. This one was Bobby Prince, unlike certain Apogee games. Lee Jackson and Bobby Prince were almost dead even on tracks composed for this game in the first three episodes. If you're gonna have music composed for your game in the 90s, can you do better than Bobby Prince and Lee Jackson? Bobby Prince made Doom's music and Lee Jackson made Rise of the Triads music, which I still like Rot's soundtrack better because to this day I'm not sure anyone has ever made a better MIDI soundtrack on the PC, I don't know. To open the first vault, or whatever the fuck this is with all the gears, you have to do a puzzle that I've seen a lot of people in playthroughs have trouble with, because they're dummies. Look, you just do this. Come get some. There you go, you're done. You're flying through. 
but you have to face the end of the level now, where you blow up a bunch of stuff to get to the exit. Oh bullshit, I didn't even do that! The Battle Lord did it! I can't even get to the exit without sacrificing babes. Okay, we have to think strategically here, meaning I'm boned. Okay, I'm gonna try to absorb some of the explosion. Look, there's two babes. It's the best I can do. Blame Level Lord. Flood Zone. Uh, I don't really care for Flood Zone. It's fine on a conceptual level. It's just, uh, I'm not saying I can't deal with it. The alien bastards set up a trap where if you step onto this vent here, a rock wall opens and they shoot you. Why would you even think to do that? All these drones, all these battle lords, it's probably the hardest level for me because of the weird layout. In 1996, you didn't see a lot of underwater areas in FPS games. I still don't know why this game has sharks in it. Enemies dropping down, trying to get you when you- wait, what? Fucking kidding me! Okay, you want to see some pro shit? I'll give you some pro shit right here. Son of a bitch. Now let's save some babes. See, she's fine. L.A. Rumble, this map, favorite of the episode. You're gonna want to be flying a lot in this level, and do not run out of jetpack fuel.
afraid of no quake. It's funny in retrospect, you gotta remember back in the day, Duke held his own against Quake, that fully 3D technological marvel, with personality. It helps that Duke 3D wasn't all brown. Oh shit, we got four pigs harassing this woman here. I can't just blow him up either. We gotta play this like the hero. Yeah, save this lady outside this place. It's probably a strip club or something. Wait, no, this is an abortion clinic. You wanna dance? Shake it, baby. I don't know what's weirder, the fact that this game has an abortion clinic in it, or the fact that it looks like one of those alien labs from the X-Files. Even that has some really bad implications. I, I don't like where this is... It does mean that this chick outside is totally consequence-free, and I've been handing her hundreds this whole time, which is more than enough to pay for... You know what? I'm just gonna terminate this joke. Oh, God! Some viewers might not be in total agreement on the abortion issue, which is fine, because I'm gonna blow this place up. Oh god, that doesn't work either. Please don't blow up abortion clinic. I got a lot of drones to deal with and no doors to trap them behind. How awful. <laughs> Finally, a helicopter that's mirrored and so the letters are backwards. I don't have anything to add, it's just that always bothered me. Damn, that's the second time those alien bastards shot up my ride. You can almost immediately exit the map by doing this trick again. If you want to skip the secret level like a chump. Nah, now I can't get back out. This really pisses me off. Movie set gives you an inside look at the production of Duke Nukem in Lunar Apocalypse, which I assume they rushed into production directly after the last episode before Duke had even gotten back to Earth. You gotta strike while the iron's hot, right? Who cares about an alien invasion? We gotta have this thing out by July. You guys like walking into a room and spawning monsters outside? This set here has the exit to the secret level. Teardrops. Oh boy, teardrops. This is one of those experimental secret levels, maybe like Lunatic Fringe. Same principle, you know, weird paths that don't make any spatial sense. Four arenas stacked on top of each other. You, you jump down these pipes and you get to other places, fine. Here's your big issue. Yeah, we're still doing this. It sucks, but nobody said being a hero was easy. I'm trying to do right by the babes, God help me. All I ever wanted was someone else's approval on my world-saving abilities, is that so much to ask? You're gonna be leaning pretty hard on the shrinker because, well, this is the final area of teardrops. Ah, 
Ah, good stuff. Fun thing about the Shrinker is that when you're going around level collecting all this RPG ammo because the designers thought you'd use it, I mean, I do use it, in the next level, Rabbit Transit. How cool was this in 1996, a fully functional subway, even if it was super simple? There aren't even any seats on this train. Come on now. Those alien bastards stole all the seats. Forget riding the train. The floor is electrified. You should have protective boots still or a jetpack, whichever. There's two trains back to back and they will kill you. I don't have footage of that. Just trust me. It would be so simple if you could just go between stops, but no, you got to deal with these guys here to get to the blue key which opens another stop that's obviously closed to the public due to an alien infestation and asshole teleport triggers. You might not see them right away, but you gotta save some babes here too. Stuck in this nest. I don't think I've ever done it before, to be honest. And you're saying, what kind of sick bastard plays this game without saving the chicks? Like everybody. It sucks too, because when they die, Octobrain spawn. But it's worse than that, because halfway up the stairs, the game spawns a battle lord behind you. So you gotta use your night vision to actually see all the slimes and take them out. I think the aliens took my advice about putting explosives around their nests in the wrong way, because now they're putting them all around the babes. You know you can save the babes legit in Duke 64. Jesus, what a pain. You go through a subway library, this could be a reference to something I don't get, and then you're in Fahrenheit. Another example of the build engine games doing their best work when you're in something that approximates a real-life location. Wait, hold on. We've gotten to a point in the game where it's going to be a ton of enemies teleporting in. I buy it, aliens teleporting in to screw Duke over. I can deal with that. This level has a firehouse, a radio station, an apartment, you know, that cool stuff, and has the most Duke 3D moment in Duke 3D. This is KTIT, KTIT, playing the breast are the best tunes in town. It's juvenile, yeah, but kind of fun. You walk into this radio station, which has cameras, you know, and security rooms full of monitors. None of this makes sense. But God, it's fun most of the time, except for all the drones and this exit. <laughs> Oh, the exit to this level might as well be a coin toss. If this was Shadow Warrior, this is where I'd fire a nuke and duck back into the water, but no, shooting that crack in the wall doesn't help. So like a pro, I spray and pray with the Shrinker. <laughs> Hotel Hell. This would be the last level before the boss, except there's a secret level we'll get to. Best one in the game, in my opinion. But Hotel Hell is no slouch. Another level that nails its theme, and you can kind of tell that they were trying to make this one impressive. This is the last full level most people saw in their first playthrough. You got cool little details like the destroyed bathroom, all these rats, devious traps, and thrilling battles blowing up the building around you. The aliens keep coming, but they can't stand up to the raw power of one roided up swole dude with a bunch of guns. Hotel Hell is one of my favorite levels that just captures what the design of Duke should be. It's open, but never confusing. You're in through the back door, but you can also leave through the front or the side. There's a section at the front desk you can approach from two different directions, and one of those directions might get you killed immediately. Don't forget the wine secret. Swim with sharks, find this out-of-nowhere Indiana Jones reference. 
We meet again, Dr. Joe. You don't even need to go in here to get to the secret level. That exit is hidden behind a tree. 10 out of 10 Duke level. It's everything I love about this game. And Freeway ain't bad either. I'm surprised it's a secret level, except for Launch Facility, the secret levels in Duke 3D's main episodes were all kind of jokes or weird experiments. You start off in a sewer, but it's not a sewer level. Really? Fuck these drones. I hate them. <laughs> And this is another level where you have some choices. You could break out through this wall, you could jetpack up to the street. Either way, you're in for a fight. Love it. This toppled building you can go inside? Great. The best part? The Cyberdyne building. I'm not sure why this happened, but this is the last drone kill of the episode. Terminated. Now though, grab some health and head to the stadium, the final battle for now. And I'll tell you what, the Cycloid Emperor is pretty easy if you know how to circle strafe. It's down to you and me. That's not everything. We're gonna kill him, we're gonna blow up the blimp, we're gonna humiliate him, and we're gonna save the babes. When you win, those cheerleaders are the first in line for a little duking, if you know what I mean. My name's Duke Nukem. After a few days of R&R, &R, I'll be ready for more action. Aw, come back to bed, Duke. I'm ready for some action now. After a few days of R&R, &R, I'll be ready for more action. A few days. 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 What are you gonna do? Save the world all by yourself?